Sermon on the Mount as we continue in chapter number five, looking at what real righteousness looks like. And we've talked about it being internal rather than just only external, that it needs to be complete. It's not just not killing people, but it's not hating them, not wanting to harm them. It's, it's looking out for their best interest even. It's not lusting for, it's not just not committing adultery or sexual immorality. It's, it's about uh, not lusting in your heart. So it's, it's a, an internal thing. It's a complete uh, righteousness. And it is a kind of righteousness that doesn't exalt ourselves. It's a kind of righteousness that's not putting other people down so that we look better in the eyes of the world, which is the kind of righteousness, again, that the Pharisees had. But now we want to talk about righteousness as it concerns uh, marriage. Now, we're not going to talk much on this because later on in chapter number 19, Jesus talks about marriage uh, in the in, in a little more complete. But here in what he's talking about, he came on to the, uh, the idea of sexual immorality. He throws in divorce there, which again, we think as long as we don't commit adultery, which means I don't have a relationship with anyone else while I'm married, that that's okay if I divorce and now I can have sexual relationship with someone. And really, that's what the Jews did uh, back during the days of Ezra and Nehemiah. They were doing that. They were casting off their wives and marrying new wives. And there wasn't any reason for them to cast off their wives except that they were tired of their wives. Their wives had gotten older. Uh, their wives weren't as seductive as the Edomites. And they were marrying foreign women. And so these seductresses were more appealing. And so they were doing that. And so they thought, well, we're keeping the law because we didn't commit adultery. Uh, we got a divorce. And, and therefore, uh, it's, we're free to have sexual relationship with this person now because we're married to them. And Jesus puts a kibosh on that. Uh, he says, no, 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 listen, hey, it's the heart again. Yes, you, you may have gotten married. That marriage didn't work out. You got a divorce. And, and now... You consider yourself no longer married to that individual. Now you're free to go marry another individual. And now that you're married, you can have a relationship with that individual. And Jesus said, well, listen, no, no, no. That itself is adultery. Now you do with that what you feel like you need to. But the words of Jesus here and also in chapter number 19, you can read chapter Matthew chapter number 19 on your own. And you will see that he reaffirms uh, these ideas in, in Matthew chapter number 19 as well, and beginning in verse 9. Okay, let's read uh, Matthew 5 verse 31. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. In other words, you don't just quit on your wife and go start an affair with someone because you're not happy in your marriage. But you've heard it said, go ahead and give her a divorce. You're not happy in your marriage. Get her, get her out of the way first. Divorce her. Now you consider yourself no longer married to her. And by their law, not God's law, but by their law, they consider that legal, binding, and okay. Then he goes ahead and says, But I say unto you, that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. And so he says, again, it's the attitude of the heart. Now, he's not talking about in a situation where you've been married, your wife has died, and she's no longer alive, or your husband has died. You're free to remarry in that situation. And even Paul talks about the fact that you were in a situation in a marriage and you wanted to keep that marriage together. You, you did everything. You fought for the marriage, but your spouse decided, I'm out of here. And they walk away from the marriage. Now, in that situation, Paul said it would be better for you to remain single, you know, and, and, or reconcile with your, your spouse if that's possible. But if that spouse goes off, and they begin a new relationship. They've divorced you. They walked out on you. That was not the intent of your heart. Your heart didn't try to push them away so they would leave because you wanted it to a new relationship with someone else because God knows the heart. That's what this whole story is about. 
what this whole teaching is about, is the heart. But they walked away from the marriage and now they've entered into a new relationship Then they've committed adultery. They have broken the marriage vows. And now Paul and even Jesus says here, now you are free because they've committed sexual immorality. You're free to go into a new relationship. Now, others would say, well, Donnie, that doesn't include what we see today, and that is violence within marriage. A woman who is just literally beaten physically, emotionally, and she is in a terrible, even dangerous circumstances. You mean she can't divorce her husband? Well, the Bible teaches that she can separate from her husband. Just get out of the circumstances, leave that set of circumstances behind. Now, because of the heart of, of humanity. Even, even Moses in the Old Testament says, gave permission because of the hardness of the heart of men. It gave permission for a man to divorce his wife so that that dangerous situation wouldn't, wouldn't continue on. But again, that individual needs to stay in uh, a no relationship whatsoever sexually until their spouse has committed adultery. Then they're free. To remarry. You so say that just seems awfully harsh. No, that just means God has a high opinion of marriage and humanity has a very low opinion of marriage. When people enter into a marriage covenant, that is something sacred and binding. And that's what Jesus teaches here. The problem with marriages is not the externals. The problem with marriages is the heart of individuals. And it could be both of the person entered into the marriage, their hearts are not right with God and therefore this relationship's not going to work out. It could be only one of their hearts are not right with God. Their heart desires another relationship or to be at least out of this relationship. But Jesus makes it very plain. And again, go to chapter 19 and I read there, beginning about verse nine, uh, verse 9 and following, you'll see that Jesus reaffirms these things. So the teachings of Christ are far harder on his disciples than even the teachings of Moses. Don't murder, is what Moses said. Jesus said, hey, don't even hate them in your heart. Don't commit adultery. Jesus said, hey, don't even look at a woman to lust after her. Uh, the Old Testament law says you can divorce your wife if you're not happy in the marriage. Just uh, go ahead and give her a writ of divorce. But Jesus said, no, no. In my kingdom, no. You commit yourself to someone, you stay committed to them until they walk away or they break the sacred covenant. Then you're free to remarry. So this is the teachings of Jesus. And again, it has to do with the inner heart of an individual and make sure our hearts are pure before God. And if two people come together as husband and wife, and their hearts are pure before God and they're right with God, their marriage may have bumps, will have bumps, will have problems. There's going to be stormy days and sunshiny days, but they're going to be able to work it out because they have a heart towards righteousness. Let's pray together. Father, again, we thank you that you're very clear. This is not giving us anything gray matter here. This is something that is black and white and a very clear teaching of our Lord. Help us to live out this kind of righteousness and help us to be the kind of spouse that we need to be uh, so that we might be able to glorify you up on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.